we're going to do is get back to a pre-Obama world. And, you know, the defeatism of the left and the defeatism of our elites is unbelievable. So I did an interview a little while ago, and this guy says, well, how can you possibly talk about getting down to 250? After all, look what could happen in Iran. Look what happened here. What if the Saudis do this? What if that happened? I stopped and I said, wait a second. If the United States decides to maximize the production of oil and gas, we will be the largest oil producer in the world before the end of the decade. If we're the largest oil producer in the world by the end of the decade, by definition, the price will be lower than if we're not the largest oil producer in the world. So now we're into an argument about you want a lower price or a higher price. Okay, if you want to set a goal, what I did is I went out and asked experts in the oil field, given the cost of producing more sophisticated fields that require deeper drilling, what would be a sustainable price that would get you out there exploring? They said somewhere between two and 250. Now, we also have a tax program, which includes zero capital gains tax, so hundreds of billions of dollars pour in for investment. There's a 12.5% corporate tax rate, so even better than Canada in encouraging business. It has 100% expensing for writing off all new equipment. It eliminates the death tax permanently so that people don't have to worry about the tech, about being punished if they spend their whole life being successful. And for the individual, we have a 15% flat tax as an alternative, so you can either keep the current complicated system with all the paperwork, or you can write in, here's how much I earned, here's how many dependents I have, here's 15%. Now, if we go down that road, and I want to replace the Environmental Protection Agency with a brand a brand new environmental solutions agency that has to include economic common sense uh, and that has to be aware of science and technology and has to be collaborative rather than dictatorial. And if you do all those things, you're going to see a dramatic increase in production. But, but it goes a step further. President Obama got worried last week, so he, he answered my energy program and gave a speech in Florida. And then I came back on Saturday and I answered his speech. And we've now put the two together so they're kind of like a debate. We have Obama, then me, Obama, then me. And the president said that he is against um, having a um, silver bullet. He said there's no silver bullet that will fix this. And I said, that's right, but there's a presidential pen. <laughs> Here are three immediate things Obama could do today, if you wanted to. One, approve the Keystone Pipeline for 700. That brings 700,000 barrels a day to Houston of Canadian oil and dramatically improves our energy security. Two. Approve going back to pre-Obama development of the Gulf of Mexico. That's about 400,000 barrels a day. Yeah! Three. Approve the known fields in Alaska that are already developable. That's about a million two hundred thousand barrels a day. Now, just in those, you have two million 300,000 barrels a day of additional oil for the United States. Now think about that. Just in those three steps. That doesn't mean you've opened up federal land. It doesn't mean you've gone offshore in general. It doesn't mean you've had all these other developments I'm describing. Just those three signatures. Now it's inconceivable that if we added 2,300,000 barrels a day to the world market, that we wouldn't have a substantial impact on price at the margin. But then you go a step further. You start talking about opening up offshore, and you start opening up federal land. 
Just off of Georgia and South Carolina, there is a huge supply of natural gas, which would create jobs. Uh, the average in Louisiana for offshore jobs is $80,000 a year. So if you had a wave of new jobs, and you know, North Dakota, where they have done this, because in North Dakota, the formation is on private land, and Obama couldn't stop it. So he's currently taking credit for the development he couldn't stop, while on federal land, there's actually been an 11% decline in production. But on private land in North Dakota, they've created so many new jobs, they now have a 3.5% unemployment rate. And that overstates it because there are 16,000 unfilled jobs in the oil field and the 3.5% don't have the right skills for these jobs. If they had the right skills, they'd be at about zero unemployment rate. That's how big the difference is. So one of the things that American energy policy would do is create lots of jobs. A second thing an American energy policy would do is it would create huge federal royalties. The people who developed the North Dakota field believe if we opened up federal land and we opened up offshore over the next generation, the federal government would earn between 16 and 18 trillion, not billion, trillion dollars in royalties without a tax increase. That's enough that if you kept it over here in a special fund and you balanced the budget, this would pay off the federal debt. That's how big it is. You think about it from that perspective. Now you're talking about huge volumes of potential money to give us to a much healthier future. Uh, I argue that we need to be independent in our production of energy so that no future president will ever again bow to a Saudi king. What the royalties mean is we also won't bow to the Chinese debt holders because there won't be any. And finally out of that process we get back to $2.50 a gallon gasoline. So we are better off. You know, one of the things I want to ask you to do when you go home is how many of you are on Facebook? Raise your hand if you're on Facebook. Okay. I want all of you on Facebook to go home and go to Facebook, and I want you to put in Newt equals $2.50 a gallon. That's all you have to do. That'll be a major contribution to the campaign to just get the word out that I want to campaign from now until Super Tuesday. If you'd like $2.50 a gallon for gasoline, vote for Newt Gingrich. It's not a complicated message. Uh, and then we're, we're looking for volunteers who will understand at gas stations. Uh, and pass out leaflets as people pull in, and just ask them, how much less would you be paying? When you fill up your tank, measure it against 250 a gallon, and that'll give you some idea, because frankly, if we go up to five or six or seven dollars a gallon this summer, the economy's gonna crater. People will have no discretionary income. California yesterday broke five dollars a gallon in Los Angeles. Uh, and this isn't, you know, remember, this normally doesn't happen until Memorial Day. So we are in a situation that could get much worse very fast. Now, let me carry a step further. We need to be independent of the Middle East for energy. Yeah.